Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to another RC Reacts. Today's Crystal Palace Leeds United matchup. And as you can see for the second match in a row, Leeds have fallen 4-1. to one. I try to keep things positive. I try to look at things realistically. But I'm going to jump on the bandwagon here and I'm going to say VAR sucks. Horribly. Horribly. I think Bamford got screwed twice. Uh, he did. He scored a goal in the first, you know, uh, uh, answering goal to Palace, and they called it offsides because his elbow to his hand was offsides with him leaning forward. But his head, his neck, his torso, both legs, both feet were all on sides. Even his shoulder was on sides. So I had some people on the internet fire back at me on uh, Twitter that, you know, the new rule states that any part of your body that you can score a goal with makes it an offsides. If you touch the ball with your hand or your elbow, unless you're a certain South American player, right, makes that a handball and would disallow a goal. So the fact that his elbow and hand are off sides, he can't score with those. His shoulder was on sides. That was a horrible call. And I understand rules change, but keep in mind, I was a FIFA licensed official for about eight years. So uh, I was trained not at the level that, you know, Premier League or professional officials are. I was doing, you know, youth leagues, high school but the law, the rules of the game are still the same, and we are, you know, we were trained in the same exact rules uh, and game management that Premier League officials are. So that was that was horrible. And then the penalty, eh, I could have went either way. Of course, I'm leaning that it was probably called again, you know, that because it was Bamford or Leeds, a newly promoted side. I don't know how much of that subconsciously comes into play with VAR, but it does seem like certain teams, Man City, Man United, Liverpool, uh, and certain players seem to get the benefit of the doubt of VAR. Uh, but I thought Patrick Bamford, I thought he was run through. If you look at the replay, he was scissored. He, you know, the defender had legs on both sides of him and completely scissored him. I thought that should have been a penalty, but you know, it is what it is. So let's get into the match. First off, the game sucked. We lost 4-1. End of discussion. But look, I'm gonna stick up for Patrick Bamford. He is the only goal scoring threat we have. I mean, look at Palace's score line. Three different players on three different goals, and Bamford's the only player that looked a threat for us today to shoot, to yeah, to score, let alone even shoot the ball. You know, I know there were some odd shot. You know, there was one shot from Alioski that I remember. Uh, I think uh, Harrison took a pop from long range that, you know, sailed 80 feet over the bar. But Bamford's the only one that looks a threat to take the ball into the box and even make an effort. And we're not going to win any games if we rely on one player to do all of our scoring. So love Bamford, hate Bamford, be ambivalent towards Bamford. If he is the only one that is a threat to shoot or score for us, we're not going to win many games. We've got, you know, what happened two years ago when Click, you know, had almost had double digit goals when Alioski had five plus goals. You know, that's what we need. We need, I mean, Costa got on the score sheet, granted for the wrong side, but, you know, with the own goal right before half. But, you know, we need more people being a threat to put the ball in the net. And Rodrigo is certainly the biggest threat we have and he's out right now but we can't we can't make excuses for players being injured palace had players injured you know everybody has injuries everybody has you know possible covid cases right now with this going on so we can't we can't lean on that all right let's talk about the match we're definitely missing calvin phillips 
Uh, Pascal Stroik got back in the side today. I thought he did okay. He didn't look he didn't look outclassed, but he didn't do anything amazing for the side either. He looked he looked a little bit better in the second half before he was subbed off. Um, Rafinha came on at halftime for Costa, and then um, Tyler Roberts came on in the around the sixty to sixty fifth minute. Uh, he came up front for Click. Click moved back to the holding midfield for Stroik. But in the early second half, Stroik looked a lot better. But anyway, um, look, Palace scored four goals. Dan was a perfect header. I mean, it was a worldy header off a corner that he put top bin. Meslier had no shot at the ball. The second goal was a set piece by Ize and from right outside the box. And if you if you you know if you guys are watching this or you're a Leeds fan, I'm assuming you know football. Meslier built his wall. He had the wall there. If you watch the replay, the ball went right over Stroik's head. Stroik jumped for the ball. I don't know if he could have jumped higher, but I can't put that on him because he did make an effort. Bamford went up for the ball who was right next to Stroik. And Ize put the ball right over Stroik's head with a dip, and it went right in under, you know, actually went off the crossbar into the goal. And, you know, left side on the wall side, the keeper has to protect the back side, or that's an easy goal. No shot. And then the third goal was was a fluke where uh, they played a cross in. Costa was back on defense. And it just took a touch. Now, I will say on that particular goal, Meslier should not have gotten beat near post. Now, a lot of times it's just you know normal to say you should never get beat near post. I don't agree with that because there are times that's going to happen. But on this one, I think what happened is the cross went in and he was looking for the ball, and he glanced to check where runners were, which you have to do so you can set your position. And he switched focus from here to here, and the ball took that deflection off Acosta. And it just, I mean, it was right inside the post. I mean, you're talking, you know, a perfect placement on a fluke. So two worldies and a fluke goal. The IU goal in the 70th minute, that's the only one I really can't can't say anything about. You know, they took us apart. Alioski probably should have been a little bit tighter on him with the man marking that we have. And, you know, Meslier came out. He actually got a hand on the ball. If I don't know if you – I couldn't tell that on the initial shot uh, live, but on the replay, Meslier actually got his left hand on the ball – and we've seen enough this season. Meslier has extremely strong hands and can normally push that ball away. But this one, he just, it, it went off the hand into the net. There was nothing, you know, that was legit. So, you know, we had we had a goal taken away from us that should have been a goal in all likelihood on the, on the offsides call. So Bamford scores two, ends up with credit for one. And then we should have had a possible penalty later in the match. If we get even one of those two goals, and then, you know, what's the odds of a worldie? You know, less than 50%. So two of these three goals probably shouldn't have counted. But that's the breaks. I mean, that kind of stuff happens. So 4-1 defeat, you know, we were not outplayed. But let's take a look at, well, let's talk some more, and then we go into the stats last. Um, I was kind of wondering after the first goal by Dan if Palace would collapse into like Wolves and Lester did and collapse into more of a defensive posture, and they did not. They stayed on the attack. And one of the now I, I, this was the first Palace game I've ever watched in my life, and I got to say, I was a big fan of the game. Very exciting, very open, and if Palace plays like that all the time, I could easily see being a uh, rooting for Palace were I not a Leeds fan. Uh, but, um, you know, having not really known anything about Palace, I was very impressed uh, by the effort, by the attacking, by the openness. Made it a very fun game to watch, albeit not a fun game for the uh, score 
at the final. The click ball on the on the goal that was disallowed, the first goal by Bamford that was disallowed, Click took the ball on the edge of the box, did a beautiful drop pass in between defenders. Bamford ran onto it and put it in with a blistering shot on his left foot. Uh, thought it was great. Uh, looked really, really good. Um, of course, called back for the offsides. Uh, right after that, there was a play, and I was really worried for a minute. Click was off the ball. Uh, and he was going one direction, tried to plant, and his leg buckled. And I was fearful he had torn a knee ligament because uh, he went down hard and he stayed down for a little while. But uh, he played the rest of the game, so I think he's okay, hopefully. I made a note at that moment. I was hoping at worst it was going to be a twisted knee. And we do have the international break coming up that he could be fit coming back from that. But... Um, I made a note on the uh, Ize set piece that no chance for Meslier, um, the, that the VAR decision certainly loomed large at that point. And both goals off of set pieces, corner and a, set, and a direct kick, you know, just, uh, just the breaks. Uh, I thought Bamford then coming back and getting that initial disallowed goal that he might be in one of those moods like against Villa where he got angry at, you know, at the call and was on pace for a really big game, which I think he played well. He had the disallowed goal. Then he got the goal in the 27th minute. And then he had a header opportunity late in the game that he just misjudged. It went, ended up going off his shoulder instead of his head. I think if he would have gotten his head on the ball, that would have been in the net as well. So, you know, Love him or hate him, he's the only guy even sh looking dangerous for us right now uh, with goals. So you better support him uh, because there's nothing else going on right now for Leeds in the goal scoring department. Uh, I thought the second half got off to a really slow start, really uh, not sluggish, but just a lot of passing side to side and not a, not a lot of going forward. One thing I will note is we made our hay in the championship with the long diagonals uh, coming from uh, center backs um, or, or you know your, your wing backs, your Luke Ayling and uh, Janny Alioski today, usually Stuart Dallas on that left back position. But you know playing diagonal balls up to the wingers, so you know, up, up to the left to Harrison or out right to, to Costa or Rafinha. And I've noticed the last few weeks, probably Wolves was the first one I really saw us get shut down on that, uh, where they're, they're dropping that, that midfielder into that channel uh, to cut off that, that long diagonal. And we're having a hard time hitting that, and that's what breaks us open with overloads uh real quick so that's something we're gonna you know hopefully i, I know bielsa can do it the question is will he because as Leeds fans we know he's wedded to his system but that is something we're gonna have to address whether it's quicker movement up to cause a shorter diagonal or pushing that holding midfielder the calvin phillips role farther up the pitch to where he can make the diagonals instead. I don't know, but that's why Beals has paid the money. I hope he can ad adapt to that because I think now we're seeing a pattern. Teams are shutting that that outlet down pretty regularly. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. But we did look hesitant moving the ball. We finally started around the 63rd, 65th minute. We started kind of breaking a little more, uh, picking up the tempo a little bit. Um, and as I said, it was a very open and fast paced flowing game. Uh, I do think the keeper, uh, not the keeper, the, the, uh, referee for the most part had a good match, uh, letting things go, letting the play, you know, letting the game go. Uh, so, you know, can't say anything about that. Uh, that fourth goal I said uh, for IU, you know, the defense opened up, you know, we talked about that click looked a lot better than Stroik in that holding midfield again this game, much like he did in the Villa game when Stroik was subbed off in the first 20 minutes due to picking up that yellow against Grealish. 
But he didn't look good last game against Leicester when he started in that position. So we we really don't have a full-time answer as a deputy for Calvin Phillips. Not surprising. I mean, he, you know, he plays for England's national team. He's probably a $40 million player now. You know, you just don't have deputies for those kind of guys. But anyway, so that's my notes on the game. Uh just taking a look, we were actually outshot. They had double the shots on target. We had possession, 260 more passes, better passing accuracy, but a lot of those were not because Palace was sitting back defensively like Leicester did after they took the lead or Wolves did in that match, but just we weren't able to hit that long diagonal and we spent time shifting the ball left to right and right to left. And that's how we build up a lot of our passes. Uh, quite a few fouls, couple of yellow cards. Uh, the one offsides call, just hugely costly. And I think much like much like last week's game, or Monday's game against Leicester, if Bamford gets credit for that goal and we, we equalize at one, that possibly changes the whole match, right? Possibly changes the whole match. And, you know, we saw that last week as well where, you know, a call goes against us and then things just fall apart. So taking a look at the standings, uh, we have uh, Palace moves up into sixth position. So, yeah, they're up into sixth position with a win. And uh, we fall down to 14th position, three losses in our last five. So we're, we're kind of stuck on 10 points. We are still seven points clear of relegation, which is three games. So nothing, to, you know, it's not time to hit the panic button. And I will be, you know, again, I try to be honest. I try to look at this honestly as a football fan, not a Leeds fan. The, the odds of us challenging for Europa League or, or Champions League this year was slim and none, slim and none. And, you know, people were all excited by the early start, as was I. But I think that early start shows that we can compete in this league. Now, what was funny in last last episode, the last reaction, I actually had a Leicester fan that watched it. So thank you to anybody that's a Palace fan watching the episode as well. You know, I mean, you know, I'm just sharing my information and my thoughts for whatever they're worth. But um, he and I had a had a dialogue in the comments on that video, and he expressed concern that you know, leads are going to tire out over the season. Well, as Leeds fans, that's the same thing that was voiced to, you know, in Beals' first year. And we know that didn't happen. And it certainly didn't happen last year in the championship when we won going away by 10 points. So, and I pointed out to him, I said, look, this is the player's third year in this system. And, you know, because he was talking, you know, I made a comment that Leeds were possibly the fittest team in the Premier League. And hey, Lester ran with us. They did the whole game. And but my point was, we're going to do this for 38 games, nonstop, 38 games, and it's not going to end. And he said, "Well, you know, it's a long season." I said, "You do realize you're talking 38 games. We played 46 in the championship. So the championship is arguably it's a longer season, unarguably more games." And arguably, it's a tougher league from a physicality standpoint. More banging, more thing, you know, more things, you know, that you can maybe get away with that in the Premier League you're not getting away with. So I don't think that's going to go anywhere. And and you know, I think these clubs in the Premier League haven't paid attention to us for the last two years. So it is something to kind of be looking at. But I, I'm I'm sticking to my guns here. As long as we finish 17th, that's all I care about. As long as we're back in the Premier League next season, that's all I care about. Anything else on top of that is just gravy. 
Um, and if you're not from America, that just means it's, it's a little, you know, and I'm a, I'm a coon ass. It's a little lawn yup, a little something extra, uh, you know, the cherry on top of the ice, ice cream, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, spaghetti and meatballs. Maybe you're better with that analogy if you know what that movie's from. But, you know, it's, it's as long as we're back in the Premier League next year, that's all I care about. Um, it does suck to be behind Man United, but <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, but still, all that said, rough game, rough game. Moving forward, I am very concerned about clubs breaking us down and cutting off those diagonal passes. We're going to have to do something to change up our attacking approach within Beals' system because we can't keep doing the same thing or this is going to keep happening. And giving up this many goals is a concern. I'm more concerned about the four we gave up to Leicester than I am about this one because in this one I can look at the at the goals and go, worldy by Dan, worldy by Ize. Uh, fluke goal on the own goal by Costa. So really out of those four goals, only one was what I would term a legit goal that was earned. Um, everything else was just perfection in, in the right place, right time that worked against us. And that's not going to happen all the time. So, you know, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, if you do tune into these regularly, I do appreciate it. Don't forget, Leeds, uh, well, the Premier League is going into the international break. And so I, I am pulling up the fixture list here. Uh, let's see. So our next match will be November 28th against Everton. So... We do have uh, two weeks off for international breaks, so I will not have any reaction videos during that time, but we will be back uh, post-Thanksgiving, American holiday, uh, for the Everton re reaction video. And coming up, we have, so let's see, eight matches in, three, one, and four, ten points. Still better than one point a match. And at that rate, 38 matches puts us on 38 to 40 points, and 40 is kind of that magical threshold. So we're still in line to stay up relatively easy. Next match is coming up after the break, Everton, and then a huge matchup with Chelsea, uh, both on the road, and then we return home against West Ham. West Ham is, I, I would say, we have to win that game. I would say we have to win that one. Uh, Everton and Chelsea, those are going to be tough. I mean, those are both, you know, powerful Premier League sides. If we can pull two points out of those two matches, I think, you know, which, which is either two draws or a win in one of them, uh, I think we have to be extremely happy. So I'd be looking for, I'm going to say four points out of the next three is what I would like. Four out of three is what I would like in the next three matches. I'd love more. I want more. But if we can get four out of the next three, I think that would be good. Let me know what you guys think and what your projections are for the next three matches. I know most of you, as Leeds fans, are going to go with your heart and say three wins, nine points, easy. I get it. But, again, uh, I kind of – I. I do take this, you know, I try to view this as a football fan, but I try to do it as a realistic, not a not a Leeds fan. So everything is about Leeds. That's all I'm going, you know, for. But I do try to look at it, you know, from a realistic standpoint. So um, if you're telling me I'm not being a big enough fan, I'm trying to be realistic. That's all. So, but... Today killed me. I'm not very happy, but uh, we'll get on with it. All I want to do is stay up and be in the Premier League again next year. Small steps. All right, guys, have a good one. Enjoy the international break, and uh, we'll see you for Everton when we come back. Take care. Bye.